to Duke University's Cameron Indoor Stadium for the night's Atlanta post-conference basketball game between our guests from Chapel Hill, the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina, and your Duke University Blue Devils. Presenting the colors tonight, the Duke University Army ROTC Color Guard. And now, let us join, stand and join in singing with Francis Redding and the Duke University Pep Band under the direction of Neil Bonapani as they play our national anthem. is an exclusive presentation of Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. It's a cold, wet night in Durham, North Carolina. They've turned the lights out on Tent City. They've turned the lights on in Cameron Indoor Stadium for what is traditionally the game along Tobacco Road. The Tar Heels of North Carolina and Duke coming up next. and Jefferson Pilot Sports present the best in college basketball, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Today's game is brought to you by Continental Airlines, by Nations Bank, by Food Lion, by Ford Contour, by MCI, and by Budweiser. This place is rocking. It's hot and home to the Devils. Number two, North Carolina rolls into Durham with a record of 16 and one. And Duke's ready. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt along with Man. Billy Packer. Billy, I know you've been everywhere they play basketball, and this has to rank as one of the all-time great rivalries. Well, it's not only one of the great rivalries, of course, but this arena is the kind of place where you really would love to see college basketball played all across the country. The fans right down on the court, and of course, it's a very unusual game tonight to see North Carolina number two and Duke with not a win in the conference. Billy, how about the game plan now? I mean, it, it has to be a very emotional game for both. I think that in regard to Duke particularly, you've got to throw out the X's and O's. This is a team that has to figure out some way to get a win and to get a win against their most feared opponent and an opponent obviously ranked number two in the nation is very difficult. It does have a different feel to it tonight without Coach K. Well, I had this ball club early in the year against Illinois and I said to my broadcast partner Jim Nance, I said, Jim, by February, this is going to be a really outstanding team. Speaking of Duke, and here we are in February and it hasn't worked out. You can see what a value Coach K meant to this ball club. Absolutely. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups for you. They are ready here in Durham, North Carolina. The Twin Towers, Meek, Cherokee Park. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. 
Carolina led by Rashid Wallace. He leads the ACC in field goal percentage. And Jerry Stackhouse, awfully strong for the Tar Heels. Cameron Indoor Stadium, Durham, North Carolina. Tim Brant and Billy Packer with you. Take a look at the starting lineups first. For the Tar Heels of North Carolina, ranked second in the nation, 16-1, 6-1 in the conference. Stackhouse, you just saw. Calabria outside. Wallace, Donald Williams, who won the game with a key shot, and McGinnis. And there's a look at the dean of them all. One of the great coaches in the history of the game. Keeps going on and on, and I really think this has got to be one of the years he can be most proud of with what he's done with this club. Pete Gaudet, tough spot. Took over for Coach K. As you mentioned, when Coach K left, he was 9-3. and three. Tough job for Pete, of course, to take over. They play a very difficult schedule, and with Price getting injured, I think it took a lot out of that ball club. They haven't come around yet. Price, Parks, Meek, Capel, and Trajan Langdon, the starting five for Duke. We'll have the opening tip when we come back. For 75 years, the faces have told the story of this backyard rivalry. The faces of the fans, the players, of the coaches. So many different expressions that show triumph and defeat. It's a game played on an imaginary path, Tobacco Road. But the rivalry and the passion for this game is very real. Every year, these two teams meet to decide who's king of the road. Their struggles are legendary. But another chapter in this road's history will be written tonight. The officials tonight, Frank Scagliata, Larry Rose, and Duke Edsel. You saw the series. Duke has lost three straight to North Carolina. Inside to Williams, and it's 2 nothing Tar Heels. Boy, what a basic play to start off with. The freshman Langdon, who has not played against Carolina. We'll see that the next four years. He's here. A backboard cut, just like it to be diagrammed. Man-to-man -man defense by North Carolina. Langdon, left side to Parks for two. We're tied. Cherokee, of course, has shown throughout the course of this year that he's not afraid to step outside and become very proficient in that area. Interesting matchup. Cherokee Parks man to man on Stackhouse. Let's see if Stackhouse puts the ball on the floor and tries to beat him. It'll belong to North Carolina. Backdoor cut was available to begin us the same way. Big overplay by Duke in the man-to-man -man defense. Just underway, we're tied at two. The Stackhouse not looking to take Parks early on. I think that's a mistake. McGinnis. Very bad defense uh, so far, Tim, in this ball game. Of almost, almost like a fake phantom defense by Duke. Not what you're used to seeing, and one of the reasons they're not winning ball games. They're not shutting people down with tough man to man. Billy, you talked about emotion, though. Sometimes emotion gets in the way of concentration. That can be true. You know, you can get too high up for a ball game. Price picked up his dribble. Parks will fire. He's not close. Good hit at it, Stackhouse. Stackhouse being very patient so far in this ball game. There it's, that's what I expect right there. Just taking Parks off the dribble. No way Parks quick enough to stay with it. Just like that at 6-2, North Carolina. It's amazing to see such deficiency in Duke in the man-to-man -man defense. Capel top of the key. This is Price. He has it taken away. Pull up by McGinnis. Back to McGinnis. Swinging around. Williams. Yes. Williams. The delay fast break, something North Carolina has been great at for a number of years. Nine to two, North Carolina. And Tim, what really made that play is McGinnis pulling up. You know, not getting caught in the traffic down inside the foul lane. A year ago, that had been a mistake on his part. Price gets caught down low, almost has it stolen. 
Duke looks very unsure of itself right now. Well, starting two freshmen really don't have what you would consider a true point guard on the floor. This foul will be against Jeff McGinnis, his first first team foul. But by the time you get into February, by the schedule that Duke has played, you know, freshmen are ready to be sophomores. So people have to step up. Carolina goes to zone out of bounds. Nice pass to Parks, and he couldn't handle it. He had the easy basket. He sure did. Cable laid it up for him, and he just couldn't get there. Carolina shoots over 50% again this year from the field. So far tonight, they've had nothing but easy looks inside. They're going to keep that up. Reverse with the backdoor cut. Cable doing a better job on it. Wallace comes way out. This is Stackhouse. It's the mismatch Billy talked about. Stackhouse got poked in the eye. Turnover Tar Heels. They're first. Gary Stackhouse goes down on his knees. Almost like he was faint for a second there. Looked like Langdon was the one who reached in and poked him in the eye. His eyes still closed. You can see Tim. He really suffered some pain. Serge Wicker will come into the game. Now you can see without question, foul on the play, no call made. So Stackhouse goes out to get some medical attention. Wicker comes in. Which ought to really help Duke from a standpoint of matchups because it'll be Swicker, somebody that parks without any problem can hit. Williams? Yes, for three. three. Oh, and Donald gets that stroke going and moves into the basket off his jump shot. He is really tough to handle. Williams has eight points. Carolina leads by 10. 16 23 to go. First half. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. Jerry Stackhouse back on the court. Good to see that a real severe injury. Donald Williams off to an excellent start. He's been just hanging out on the perimeter. Good penetration by Carolina on the swing and a semi-delay break. And Carolina comes out showing a 2-3 zone, something they've used a lot this year. North Carolina, five for five from the field thus far. Duke just one of two. And it's the Tar Heels by 10. Watch Jerry Stackhouse really flexible on the inside, the back line of that zone. Langford, he was short with his shot. Well, with Duke having the advantage with two power players in the game, you'd think they'd get some kind of high-low going inside, make Wallace really have to work on defense. Wallace hits Carolina six for six. Absolutely no D right now by Duke. Carolina showed the zone one time, come back to man-to-man. -man. There it is. Inside of me. There it is, Tim. A little high-low offense. Using the big people, somebody's going to be in a mismatch, either Parks or, or, or Wallace. Has to, he has to take either Parks or Meeks. Wallace! Back screen on Meeks. 16 to 4, North Carolina. Oh, was that pretty. Well, nobody talked to Meek at all on that particular play. And when you get the blind back screen, it's kind of tough. Carolina perfect. In. Nicely done. Craig and Langdon. Good power move. Second one of the game so far by Langdon. Although he didn't hit the first one. Williams is on fire. He now has 10 points. Something like the shot that he made against Wake Forest to put that game in a position for Carolina to win. Here's Meek again inside. Gets a lot rebound and he's pushed. That'll be the first on Wallace. And the second team foul. If Duke is going to get back into this game, they have to force Wallace to guard somebody every time down the court. Try to wear him down and get him into foul trouble. Trade one big man for the other. There was the back screen. Wallace getting the perfect lob. Steve Wojciechowski checks in now for the Blue Devils. He'll be the point. Three guard attack now by the Blue Devils. Langdon get good penetration off the dribble. Langdon, the caper. Langdon left alone in the corner. 
Tony. Look at Wallace play. Wallace! He made that play on the first step down on the other end of the floor just by beating the two big guys right out of the pack. Terrific effort. Inside to Parks. Stripped by, by Williams. Foul by Wallace. That's two on Wallace. And that's what Duke has got to do. They've got to make that outstanding young big player guard somebody every time down the floor. Good move by Cherokee on the inside. There was Williams with the strip. Cherokee stays right with it. And with his strength, takes Wallace up. Bucket's good and one. Parks goes to the line. He's a 76% free throw shooter. Right now, Cherokee and Stackhouse, two leading scorers in the ACC, going head to head tonight. Wallace on the bench, exactly where Duke would like to see him. That cuts the lead back to 11. Say what you will about the freshman, Will Jokowski, but he's tough. In play somebody. Put a little pressure on that ball. Calabria, nice move. Can't get the bucket to go. This foul will be called on Will Jokowski, so Will Joe picks up his first. Foul is on pitch number 12, Steve Will Jokowski. Coming up at halftime, stay tuned for the Continental Airlines Fast Takes Contest. It's brought to you by Continental, the official airline of the ACC. Tim Brandt, Billy Packer with you at Cameron Indoor Stadium, 13-25 to go in the first half. Both teams really small on the floor right now. A lot of guards playing in this game. Delavery went out and Landry replaced him. Stackhouse, this is for three. Stackhouse for three. Stackhouse now has five points. When you take in consideration this Carolina team and you wonder why they're so good this year, great three-point shooting club. Stackhouse, the worst of the four starters, shooting right at 40%. Leaks battling inside. Stackhouse pulls it down. Great out. Second good decision by McGinnis today. Stackhouse fouled before the shot. This will be on Parks out front. That'll be his first. This is the largest Carolina lead of the game at 23 to 9. Well, you can see again, Tim, Stackhouse just much too quick for Parks. Really a mismatch by position. Good defense by Wojo out front, pushed the shot too hard. Langdon pushes. Wojciechowski picked up his dribble and got into trouble. You can tell that Duke, because of the loss, is very unsure of themselves. Very little that they're doing today is instinctive. It seems like almost Pat, every pass is a thought process. That's four turnovers now for the Blue Devils. I'm not sure who Collins was throwing to on that last one. See what Carolina has done off those turnovers we talked about. And Tim, when you think of Duke, again, trying to point out the tough problems they've had this year, they only have five more assistant turnovers on the year. Very unusual for their ball club. A lot of it has to do with the inexperience, and I'm sure a lot of it with regard to uncertainty, lack of confidence. This is Collins. He's having a tough year, struggling. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense by Carolina, cutting off all the passing lanes inside. Parks thought he was free for a second inside the Meek. Pretty good job by Zwicker. His job is to play the minutes while Wallace on the bench. Oh, awesome. Stackhouse! Oh, my! Awesome play. Not many guys in the college level, if any, can do this. Goes underneath, gets fouled twice, and still jams. Stackhouse is 6-6. Six, six. I, I think that Duke making a huge mistake with Cherokee Parks trying to guard him. Yeah. Parks is 6-11, Meek 6-10. Stackhouse not afraid to take it at anybody. What you can do is you can put Parks on the guy least likely to shoot the ball, Landry. And then put a better matchup man on Stackhouse. Timeout. Parks has two personals. 11:33 to go in the half. It's Carolina big.
26 to 9 Carolina you see the time remaining in the first half Donald Williams with 10 points Stackhouse with eight Wallace with six for the Tar Heels. Little jump here by North Carolina right out of the timeout situation. Collins now seven for 44 from beyond the arc this year. Parks with a follow. Nice power move inside. He had seven points. Real answer for Cherokee Parks down inside where he has the advantage over Stackhouse. Parks knocks it out of bounds. Well, a huge, huge mismatch there with Parks and Stackhouse. You mentioned it early. And Carolina really taking advantage of it. Well, Carolina taking advantage of the mismatch when it's in their favor. And there you see three outstanding sophomores. Pretty good numbers. Oh, All yeah. five starters average double figures for the Tar Heels. Almost stolen by Cape. Here's Stackhouse. Last touch by Zwicker. It'll be Duke basketball. Number 55, Dean Smith, 34 years as head coach at North Carolina. 819 wins. Number 30. It's kind of interesting. Dean Smith comes back even with his big lead with Wallace, who has two fouls that he picked up early. I think the reason for that is. Parks goes out of the game. Dean Smith figures that he can have Wallace in the game being active without Parks. Collins, nice pump fake. He's fouled. Stackhouse is whistled. That's his first. Jerry Stackhouse realizing Collins, not a great leaper, probably should have stayed on the ground, Tim. On the team. Shooting for the Liberals, number 20, Chris Collins. This is amazing. The first time I ever saw Chris play was in the McDonald's All-American game where he had won the three-point shooting contest. And now, as you pointed out, having all kinds of problems from the perimeter as a shooter. At the foul line, though, Billy is 11 for 13. Hey, a reminder, stay tuned at halftime when Dick Town presents the DirecTV Dish Out the Winner Sweepstakes. 26 to 13 with 10 and a half to go in the first half. Carolina Bay. back in the ball game Calabria takes it down the middle turnover nice job by me Collins throws it away if you're down by 13 you can't afford behind the back passes on the break got to play it solid he had a three on one I don't know why he didn't take it to the middle exactly Tim Today. No help back there. You know, it's just a little fake to the top. A lot of times with a little reverse dribble, Carolina didn't need it that time. It's been a patented move by the Tar Heels for years. There's Ricky Price. That's his first basket. He's a nice looking player. He did miss four games with a sprained ankle. And to be honest, he hadn't really been the same since. Nope. Open. McGinnis doesn't have the angle for it. McGinnis making a lot of good judgments in this game so far. Shot clock hasn't really come into play until here. This is eight on the shot clock now. McGinnis will go to work. Calabria, one on the shot clock. Big break for Carolina. Good job by Newton Stackhouse next time. I guarantee we'll put that ball on the floor and go by him with a dribble. But it be third. Meek got too far under the hoop. Well, there's a case where Eric probably should have thought about drawing the foul and not worried about scoring because he had Wallace in really a dangerous position. And there you see. No pump fake. Good job by Newton. He blocks his man out and the tent takes off down the other end of the court. Nice play. Capel comes back into the ball game. Collins goes out. Langdon, Parks, Capel, Price, and Newton on the floor. Purdue. 
And Timo, he talked about that play with Eric. He's never going to be the most gifted guy to avoid the contact. And if he would have gone for contact with Wallace, he'd have had Wallace on that bench with three fouls here early, basically in the first half. Eric Meek getting a breather. And having a pretty solid season for a guy that intended initially to redshirt. He had a terrific game against Maryland and Joe Smith last weekend. Held Joe to six points. Well, Joe came back pretty well against Virginia, though, didn't he? He sure did. <laughs> Wallace again off and running. Matter of fact, I think that was the best performance I've seen all year by anybody. Joe Smith. Not only one of the conferences best, but one of the nation's best. Tell you what else, Junior Burrow was awfully strong last night. Here's Calabria. Much better defense by Duke than this set right here. Brilliant. Ah. Newton with another big rebound. Newton, of course, having some academic problems here at Duke University with a potential suspension, playing extremely well in this game. Price with a follow. Cherokee <laughs> made that by shocking it. Duke's making a run. They seem to have taken it up a level. Playing much hard, harder defense right now. This will be called on Parks. But it's an 8-2 run right now by the Blue Devils. Stackhouse will be in here shortly. 7.47 to go in the half. We'll be back after this message from Park West Auto Parks. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by Toyota and by Fan for Men. Are you going to see a young man playing only 11 minutes a game on the season, but showing he wants more time tonight? Look at how hard Newton works on Wallace. Fights his way through the screen, beats him to the spot, fights him off when he tries to get position, helps out on defense, and then goes up strong for a rebound. Terrific all-around playing by Newton on defense. A couple of big bodies, too. Newton, 6'11", 220 pounds. Wallace, 6'10", 225. 28 to 11, North Carolina. The back door this time broken up by Capel. And last touch by Wallace. Capel might have hurt his leg on that particular play. He stayed at home when he recognized the back screen. That's why he was there to deflect that pass. Capel looked over to the bench and asked for a sub. Running a little better now. Looks like he ran the injury off. He'll hit the jumper and then say, Coach, I'll stay in. <laughs> Here's Newton. Faded away on the shot a little bit. Aggressively look for it, though. Carolina certainly cooling off after that uh, torrid start. And Duke has taken it up a level on an 8-2 to two run. Wallace ends that, and he's fouled. Excellent, on Newton. Excellent positioning by Wallace and a great feed by McGinnis. Well, Wallace got what he had right there is he realized how aggressive Newton had been the last time beating him to the spot coming over the top. So he set out a little higher and that made Wallace, that made Newton go out two steps further, gave him a perfect position to throw the lob over the top. He's the most, most, and and excuse me, Tim, most aggressive I've seen Newton play. They said he did it in practice, but this first time in the game, he really seems like he's into it. Langdon left alone, goes to the other side. Nice pass. Oh, how about that? Newton put it away. There's the high-low situation with Duke taking advantage of superior size inside for that matchup match for Stackhouse and Parks. Let's see how long it takes Stackhouse to take advantage of his uh, superiority and quickness against Parks. McGinnis gets double. Shot clock at seven. This is McGinnis. The Blue Devils make another stop. Carolina really cooling off. There's Price with that great first step. Offensive. Nice job by Wallace. Yeah, 
Right guard Pure Power is proud to present the ACC Player of the Week. Look for this feature prior to the second half tip off. You know, Tim, a guy like Bryce that has that unbelievable first step that he can move, a nice uh, hand for Newton going out. And he's got to learn that when he beats his guy and sees he's going to be trapped, gets that pull up, take that little short jump. He can really be a prolific scorer here at Duke University. Newton replaced by me. Ooh, Wallace won at Stackhouse opposite. Wallace throws it away. Turnover number four. Tar Heels starting to stumble a little bit. Don't forget, ACC action continues this weekend. Maryland against Georgia Tech Saturday. Duke, Clemson, Florida, and Virginia. Virginia with a tough loss to the Turks this past night. And NC State against the Tar Heels, North Carolina. All coming your way Saturday right here on the ACC Basketball Network. And there's Carolina going into the 2-3 zone. Capel. His shot short. Wallace can't handle it. Last touch by Capel. Wallace had gotten the handle of that ball. Calabria was out and long gone because Capel normally set up with the backcourt man was on the inside. Maryland with its win over Virginia last night has a half game lead over the Tar Heels in the ACC. Carolina at six and one. In the conference. Really good spacing by Carolina on their, on their uh, offensive sets. No bucket. Offensive. Stackhouse with a charge on me. And that's two on Stackhouse. And this would be an excellent time for Duke University with Stackhouse having two, particularly if Carolina is not in the zone, to get the ball down inside. You see Stackhouse having no problems on the dribble beaten parts. But wherever Stackhouse is set up in this zone, it would be a good idea for Parks to get near him and get the ball to Parks, try to pick up that third on Stackhouse. Carolina takes Wallace out with two personals. Zwicker comes back in. And North Carolina goes to his zone. Carolina seems to be playing more zone this year than we've seen in the past. Well, the reason for that is a very short bench. So they preserve themselves by not going out and playing that tight half court or any full court pressure. Parks in double figures now after that three-pointer. Crowd back into the game. Not that they ever really left. Stackhouse. Ojakowski, Price, big shot here. Reset the clock. With a chance to get it down to six. I really think they should go inside the parks and make Stackhouse play him. Largest lead with 17. Right now, Carolina by eight. Caper to me. Comes back with a tip. The lead is six. The crowd is alive. You know, Tim, you know, uh, in all sports, sometimes you get that big, easy lead early. When they were nine for ten, you have a tendency to put it in a different gear. Billy Duke is playing with so much emotion now, emotion they didn't seem to have early on, or at least they were tight. Without question. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. Look at the MCI proof positive instant replay. This is great interior passing by Duke. Good pump fake by Langdon. Then Parks down inside. Newton, the man that really, from my uh, opinion inspired this comeback blue devils on a 15 to 4 run i believe that guy was dipped there's no way they could have painted that on and he's paying for this education oh tough shot rosakowski comes down with it you want a better shot than that coming out of a timeout. Marks for three. And this will be called on Capel. A 
guess you'd say that you'd like Duke to be a little bit more patient in the shot that Marks took. But they're on such a run, and they feel it right now. Just let them go. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good shot. He's wide open. Cherokee has proven to be an excellent shooter from that range. You're not going to get much better shot than that. Duke over the limit. Stackhouse will go to the line shooting one and one. Landry checks back in. Calabria will go out. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. Stackhouse misses the front end of the one and one. Well, the confidence level on the Duke team has just risen tenfold. There's the play. Down inside at Cherokee, and one. Tim, that's the play for Duke. Get the ball from high down into low. Particularly with Wallace out of the game on foul trouble, Carolina has a tough time with that matchup. See, Stackhouse almost got himself in position for his third foul. Although Cherokee has developed into an outstanding perimeter player, his role tonight in this game should be down in that paint. That's the first on Zwicker. Marks goes to the line. Two 29-point games this year. He's at 66 of his 87 free throws. 13 points now. He's having an All-American caliber season. He had a career-high 29 last week against Notre Dame. Right. Duke goes zone for the first time today. 1-2-2 two, two with Parks and Meek in the back. Probably because of the fact that they've already uh, put Carolina in the bonus. Carolina's lead was up to 17. Now it's down to three. Now remember the great outside shooting team that Carolina has. Zwicker put it on the floor, almost had it taken away. Last touch by Duke. Down to five seconds, Carolina. You look out on the floor, who's going to take this shot? Now, if I was Duke, I'd really have my eye on Donald Williams. You had five seconds. You know they're going to want to get the ball to him. Here he comes. Landry. Shaman Williams. And Donald Williams was open, Tim, and never, saw, never touched the ball in that sequence. This place is rocking. They're great comebacks. Duke on one right here in their own. Two minutes to go in the first half. Wojciechowski. Well, that was an NBA three. You got a question there. The stack house kicks it out to Williams. Schmond Williams. Can't get it to go. Carolina has lost sight of who got him into the lead. It was Stackhouse and the other Williams named Donald. They're not touching the ball to get an offensive scoring position. Price. Yes! That was for two. No call. Now there is. This one's on Price. Donald Williams cannot believe he didn't get called for a foul or get fouled on his shot. Number three, Ricky Price, his second, eighth on the team. Gilt, McGinnis, and Calabria back in. It's a second on Price, 18 fouls. Carolina with just two of their starters on the floor here in the last minute and 15 to go. Calabria and McGinnis. Gilt checks in, the first playing action he's seen tonight. Zwicker, Gilt, Calabria. McGinnis and Landry for North Carolina. You see Langdon as Price goes out for Duke. Well, this is as close as it's been since it was 2-2. It's amazing what Carolina has been able to do this year with this ball club considering what they come off the bench with. Well, here's a former walk-on. He stepped in when Calabria was out. He's gotten a lot of quality minutes, and he plays big now. Makes both his free throws. 
That's why if this team's going to make a real run in the NCAA tournament, they've got to stay healthy. And obviously that starting five has to continue with this great pace of theirs. Victor give him some quality minutes. Capel's attempted three was in and out, and he made that and tied the score. The roof would have come off the camera. Good showed a little zone. Now back to their man-to-man. -man. 45 seconds to go in the half. Nice move by Landry. That foul. No call. McGinnis gets it back. 35 on the clock, 32 on the shot clock. They'd be wise to hold it for one without any of their major scorers out there. There's a two-second differential. That's the game clock you're watching. Wallace on the bench, Williams on the bench, Stackhouse on the bench. If you're in Carolina, you don't want Duke to even touch it the rest of the way, even if you got to hold it the whole way. Here comes Calabria. Nicely done. That's his first bucket of the night. His shot is no good. It would have been no good. But that's a nice run by Duke to get back in this after Carolina had opened up a 17-point lead. So the end of the first half, it's Carolina 34, Duke 29. Today's ACC action is brought to you by Food Lion, by Ford Contour, by Central Fidelity Bank, by BP Oil, and by Right Guard. We are Tar Heels born and Tar Heels bred. What I've asked you to read for today is the Republic. Everything's here for the student. It's a tremendous place. We have got to begin to give our young people back a sense of hope. Chapel Hill has always been filled with a progressive spirit. Leading the way, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The Atlantic Coast Conference has a proud tradition of excellence, both on the field and in its communities. Service projects such as ACC Outreach have involved thousands of school children throughout the ACC region, stressing the value of education. The ACC would like to take this opportunity to salute our official corporate partners, Exxon, Continental Airlines, and Discus Athletic. These outstanding companies help keep the ACC active in the lives of America's youth. Duke made a strong run to close this thing to five at halftime. We're at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Tar Heels out to that 17-point lead, but it's a five-point game now. A lot of other games going on around the country. Take a look, and we can show you the final. Michigan State has beaten Penn State 82-62 in the second half. at 72-61 with Arizona on top of Washington State. And Tulane over UNC Charlotte. UNC Charlotte having played a nice game the other night against Florida State. West Virginia, 82-71 over Rutgers. That now is a final. And what a ball game between Louisville and South Florida. One point game there and Virginia Tech nice ball club beating Southern Miss tonight. Well the last 12 shots tell the story of this game right here between the Tar Heels and Duke. UNC made only two of its last 12 shots and Duke six of 12 in that comeback after they were 17 points down. Now it's time for the championship challenge. Call toll free 1-800-514-HOOPS and vote for the team you think will capture the ACC regular season title. The contest winner will be selected from all correct entries based on a random drawing and will receive a VIP trip for two to the 1995 Direct TV Grade 8 tournament. That's at the Palace in Auburn Hills. Voting ends February 11th. The winner will be announced during our ACC tournament coverage in March. This is how they look right now. Maryland with a half game lead over North Carolina with a big win last night over Virginia. North Carolina trying to go to seven and one here at Duke tonight. Wake Forest five and three Georgia Tech right behind them along with Virginia. Duke down the bottom 0 oh and seven which is incredible at this time of the year. Atlanta Coast Conference basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network will continue after these messages from your local ACC station.
some first half statistics for you for the Tar Heels from the field, 14 for 31 for 45 percent. Duke was 12 for 30 for 40 percent. Rebounding, the Tar Heels had 18, led by Jerry Stackhouse with four. The Blue Devils had 19, led by Eric Meek with seven. This week's Advance Auto Parts Smart Play of the Week comes from last Saturday's showdown between Duke and Maryland at College Park. Less than a minute to play. Game tied at 72. Keith Booth spins to the baseline by Cherokee Parks for the slam, a basket that proved to be the game winner. Another look shows that after Booth received the entry pass, Parks failed to cut off the baseline, and Booth was able to spin to the hole for the game winner. And that's our Advance Auto Parts Smart Play of the Week. Welcome back inside a very hot Cameron Indoor Stadium. Carolina with the lead 34 29. Interesting first half. Carolina went out 12 to 2, built a 17 point lead, and then all of a sudden it was as if Duke just took it up a level, Billy. Well, I think a couple of things happened. First of all, I think that Carolina was going to the go to people early. They made nine of their first 10 shots. All of a sudden, because of the big lead, I think they started distributing the ball at too many different people instead of going to the knockout punch. Take a look at the halftime statistics, and that'll pretty well tell what you're talking about. Well, you can see that the field goal shooting percentage starting out 9 to 10 really dropped back for Carolina. They're only shooting 45 percent in the, in the uh, first half. The other thing that was really important is Duke did it without hitting anything from the three-point line. They're 1 for 10 from 3, and to make that kind of a comeback without hitting 3 shows they started to pound it inside. Take advantage of Cherokee Parks. And if you want to give an MVP, I'd give it to Newton, although he only played five minutes in that first half. He turned around the momentum. We'll be back for the start of the second half after this from right guard. Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Bud Light, by Plymouth Neon. By Discus Athletic. By Direct TV. By Continental Airlines. And by Nationwide Insurance. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium in Duke, Durham, North Carolina. Tim Brandt, Billy Packer with you. The leading scorers, Billy Williams had 10. And Seemed to disappear at the latter half of the uh, first stanza. Parks with 13. Well, both players in this game last year, Cherokee had the big game here at Duke in which Carolina won. He scored 23 points, got seven rebounds. Williams was 9 for 18 in 30 minutes for 20 points. So both of those guys lead the way again this year. Carolina with 5 for 21 after starting 9 of 10. Here's Meek, takes it right at Wallace. Chance to draw a foul. Park scores. And there's the advantage for Duke. They've got the two twin towers in there against one for Carolina. They've got to take advantage of that matchup. Parks with 15 points makes the steal. Pulls up over the three-point line. Meek. Again, the two big guys taking advantage of one big guy. It's a one-point ball game. Let's see how long it takes to get Stackhouse and Williams the ball in their hands in this half. This is Wallace in the paint. Parks with the rebound. Chance to take the lead. With a bang right back down inside to Cherokee Parks. Block taken by Langdon. 
Tim, I really think that Carolina, and although this is not Dean Smith's style, can clear out for, for Stackhouse every time down the floor. It puts so much pressure on Duke to have to try to stop him because Cherokee Park's just waving at him. I mean, he's not even close to stopping him on the dribble. But then Jerry Stackhouse can start dishing out to the outside for easy three-point shots for Williams. Don't, don't make this game any more difficult than that. First foul on Trajan Langdon. And Stackhouse rolls it in. So Jerry Stackhouse now with nine points. You know, Virginia Tech played well against North Carolina, and then Stackhouse had just a monster slam dunk that just seemed to change the momentum of the game. He has that impact. Well, I think that this team, and, and it has always been a tradition with both of these schools, thrives on teamwork and distributing the ball among people. But every once in a while, you get in a situation where there's such a mismatch, you've got to take advantage of it. It's not being self, it's just being smart. Back to the zone. Bright, Bryce out on the wing. Opposite side. Mark. In and out. Boy, there's some strength, huh? Because Langdon, not exactly a weak guy himself. Ball to jump ball. The possession arrow belongs to North Carolina. 7.52 to go in the ball game. The Tar Heels lead by one. North Carolina's only loss was to NC State by 10, January 4th. Just think at that time, opening game in the ACC for the Tar Heels, people say, wow, this is not going to be their year. And what, they have really come back and played solid. Oh, it's a nice ball club. Here's Williams. That's for two. Maybe a little conversation at halftime. Make sure Williams and Stackhouse are still on the floor. With this zone, unless they pound it inside down in the middle, it's going to allow Wallace to play without getting any further foul trouble. Langdon takes it, backs it in, and one. Excellent strength. We saw that before by Langdon. Maybe just a freshman, but he's got the body of a senior. Excellent move here on his part. He now has four points. The freshman from Rankers, Alaska, had a career high 20 against Maryland last weekend. Converts to three points, and it's tied at 38. First tie since it was two to two. Right, it shows you that stroke, 83% free throw shooter. Oh, that's a key call. Called it on Eric Meek, I believe. But Parks has two at halftime in foul trouble. And Newton may be the guy to come in here for Meek early. He's just pushing. It shows you how strong Wallace is. Some serious bumping and grinding yeah. with the big guys. That's the first on Meek. Here's Williams again. Donald getting a good looking stroke again, though, with his shot. Shoots much better when he glides on in towards the basket. Oh, that's in the three. Boy, he throws Donald Williams with that fake. You notice how this game is being played strictly half court at a time. Nobody getting any breakouts. Nice hedge move by Meek, but he was holding as Wallace cut to the basket. That'll be the second on Meek in the last minute. Oh, well, Eric Meek, his second, third on the team. Look at the minutes that they're getting, Billy. That's more freshman playing time since Billis, Allery, Henderson, Johnny Dawkins, that group. Nice little jump hook by Wallace. Nice catch. Beautiful half hook. He's got that shot down. Great extension. Hits it high. Finger control. One point game. Now the major difference between this Carolina team and ones we've seen in recent years, they just play half court at a time on defense. No two, uh, three quarter or full court pressure at all. 
Langdon again. Start to feel it for three. He now has 11 points. Duke was one for 10 from threes in the first half. And still came back. Nice pass to Wallace. And the finish. Parks left alone beyond the arc. Well, NC State gave Carolina a taste of three-point shooting, and now Duke is doing it. Of course, Carolina showed a little three-point shooting in their own with 17 made against Florida State for a school record. Stackhouse, look how sweet he glides out. Well, he knows he can elevate with power against even big people like Parks and not afraid to take it in there. Neither team really playing good defense right now. It's pretty easy to get off the shot you want. Look at this. Great entry pass by Cable to me. Carolina is shocked in the fact that it looked like they had a walkthrough here the first five or six minutes of the game. They're having a hard time getting their feet moving again. Here he goes, right by Parks. Meeks couldn't get there in time. Meek couldn't get there. First Parks went down, and Meek went down. And Stackhouse never even broke stride. Well, he's standing at the top of the key looking at both of them. Both those guys checking their dentures. Meek goes out, Newton comes back in. Meek now has three. Well, Meek got excellent position here. King will pull this man back out, which created the angle. Barrick, Meek inside, excellent pass. Good patience by Meek to wait on the pass. Two shots. So Jerry Stackhouse goes to the line. He's having a great year. He's hit double figures 16 of the last 17 games. That's now got 13 in this one. Seven straight 20-point games. Price and Cape will go out of the game. Collins and Wojo come back in for Duke. Let's see what Newton does. He gave Duke the really key five minutes that was necessary in the first half. Got him started. 14.39 to go. We'll return after this message from Continental, the official airline of the ACC. Look at Duke in the second half from beyond the arc. Well, that's what impressed me so much about their comeback in the first half, Tim, is normally you make a comeback from that far down. You do it by getting hot from the outside, but they were one, in one for ten and still battled back to be in a position to take the lead at the end of the half. Carolina led by as many as 17. Duke's largest lead was five, and right now it's three. On the floor right now for the Blue Devils, Parks, Newton, Collins, Wojo, and Langdon. Collins left alone. It's in the water there now. They're four for four from three. McGinnis is fouled by Wojciechowski way out front. Boy, I tell you, when Collins starts hitting him, he was 7 for 44 from beyond the arc before that shot. Time to play fast takes, identify the player that appeared in the Continental Airlines halftime feature. Here's your number. Call 1-800-836-3ACC within 24 hours to enter. Your secret code, 18. Good screen that time by Stackhouse. McGinnis tries to drop it in the lane, and it's taken away. Trey Langdon, good drop. Collins. Two baskets, first half. Remember, Collins went in there, had two bad plays. Now he comes right back with two excellent baskets. This foul is on Langdon, and Wallace is upset with his own teammates. He's upset about the defense at the other end. Well, there was a pass where McGinnis really tried to make a too tough an interior pass. Langdon really doing a nice job pushing his ball up. Hits outside, Collins with a pump fake and a drive. Nobody there to help out at all. Wallace hits the first. Team fouls, Duke has six this half. Carolina just won. 
Wallace and Tim Duncan having a good go at each other in shot blocking in the league as well as rebounding. Duncan leading in both right now. But another monster game with his double doubles that continue. Seems like every night he goes out there with a 20 and 14 or 18 and 12 night. lead. Wallace fouled by Newton. Newton was right there with him though on that shot. That's three on Newton. Fouls on Brent Newton, number 55. But if you're Duke, you can afford to. Well, no, they don't. They're going to come back with. Well, Meek comes in, Parks out. As solid as both of those guys have been playing, you can let Newton just aggressively play himself right through it. Newton has three, Meek has three, and Parks gets a breather. Rashid Wallace is only a 61% free throw shooter, but at the line tonight, nothing but net, two for two. He's stroking. Three, your rookie price also has 15 points. You know, Tim, when you think of these two programs, and you started off tonight talking about the great uh, programs that they are, in the 14 years since Mike Krzyzewski's been here, only in 1990 did these two teams play when one of them wasn't in the top 10. And out of those 14 years, Carolina's been in the top 10 12 times, Duke 7. When you start talking about quality basketball programs, that about says it all. Duke really picking up now. You can see the feet are much quicker. Look at 59-50. Carolina kind of shell-shocked right now. They look uncertain, don't they? They really do. Calabria made the save there. Boy, he is so tough one-on-one -on -one with the ball. That's the fourth for Newton. And I'm sure that Pete Cadet would like to have had Newton stay on the floor a few more minutes before he had to come back with Cherokee Parks. But it's too late now. You know, Billy, UNC has been on a nice roll. Clemson had a fast start, but then the heels were patient. They won big. Carolina handed Virginia its first loss in the conference. Nice game by Donald Williams. Tough win against Virginia Tech. Tough win against Wake Forest. They were down. One Down by 10 with 545 right. to go against Wake. Well, one of the things about this club, it'll be very difficult to blow teams completely out of, with the exception of a game like Florida State where you're just on fire from threes because you're not going to come in off the bench with people that can extend your lead and the, the starters have to somewhat pace themselves in regard to the energy level. <laughs> 12 30 to go in the ball game. And right now, Duke gets a good play off the bench from every guy that comes out there. Here's Collins again. Sooner or later, somebody had to miss. That's the first. Boy, Clavery had an idea from beyond the arc. Drives instead and scores. Well, he ought to have ideas beyond the arc. He's shooting over 60%. But a good move on his part to take it in the hole. Leads the ACC. Leads the nation. Dangerous pass by Wojo. Number five, Jeff Cable in the lineup for the Williams. 11.58 to go in the ball game. And we'll be back after this message from Bud Light. Make sure to follow the progress of the Duke women's ball is brought to you in part by Lincoln Mercury. 11.58 to go. 59.53, Duke. Tim Brandt and Billy Packer with you at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Carolina trying to put a little bit more pressure on now with their man-to-man. -man. Good hands by Price. Don't want to turn it over here. Blue Devils still looking for the first conference win of the year. The foul away from the ball. That's a big break for Duke. Got it out of sequence there. The shot clock going down on him. Landry on the hole. That's the first on Landry. Look at the field goals in the second half. 
It really is some shooting display. On behalf of both teams, for that matter. Capel. Oh, easy. His first bucket. A lot of easy looks here. It's incredible to me that we're sitting here talking about Duke looking for its Landry drop to three. And we're talking about Duke looking for its first conference win in February. Well, I can't think of a situation quite like this. I have to go all the way back to the first year I ever remember Duke Carolina. That's when I was in college. The semifinals, the ACC tournament. Carolina had beaten Duke three times that year in regular season by more than 20 points and lost in the ACC semifinals back in 1960. Oh, oh, and one. one of these times, Collins going to hurt somebody with all that, isn't it? You know, I mean, he could have broken the guy's back there. He knocked Will Kukowski halfway down the bench. Dick Collins comes, no block out whatsoever by Williams. Collins goes right by, gets fouled twice. Now watch what he does here. This is crazy. Watch Wojciechowski. He's going to broke his back. Calabria comes back in to replace Pierce Landry and Wicker comes in and Stackhouse will go out. There's a good indication, uh, Tim, in regard to how Carolina has been thrown off balance. No block out whatsoever. A guy the size of Collins comes down the middle and gets a wide open rebound. Zwicker can't handle it. McGinnis got caught in the air. Zwicker couldn't handle it. Here's Capel. Left alone for three. I tell you, you talk about momentum. And a shift in one. This is an all timer here. Ten point lead. Duke's largest. That slipper just batted that one. That was a big break there for Carolina. Two on one. Timeout, Carolina, if they score. Price. Carolina completely out of sync. Great job by Duke in the comeback. The fans feel like it's the days of old, huh? It's definite. Here's Williams. Oh, nice follow by Wallace. And here's Wallace. That was a flush. That puts a silencer on him. the Cameron crazies in rare form tonight. Well, you can imagine, you know, what it's taken on this campus. You know, basketball has been so great here. The fans have been so great. And they got to get up and go to class every day. And what in the world is going on? This is part of the tradition of why I came to Duke, is to watch the basketball team play and win. Billy, we talked about them looking for their first conference win. And yes, they were ranked eighth in the country in November, 9 and 2 in December. Shot clock at two, off balance shot. Meek gets it back. Nice, smart play there by Price. Foul on Calabria. That's two. Carolina really frustrated now. Now they have to start looking at the clock a little bit. Tim is saying, hey, we found ourselves in a situation down by more than 10. And the clock is soon, pretty soon going to become Duke's uh, best asset. 8.35 to play. And of course, you talk about the history of these two teams. Everybody remembers the eight points in 17 seconds at Chapel Hill. Or Bobby Jones' interception in a game that Duke couldn't lose right here on this floor to change things around. Right shot, no. Some hands got high. Correction, that's three on part. You see the play. Price's shot. 
Parks over the top. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think that was a foul. You know, he had two hands on the ball, did not push off to get there. Bad call. The Chief deserved better on that one. The Chief picked up his third. say Carolina basically a half court defensive team now you start talking about making comebacks normally you make comebacks starting off with your defense particularly against a hot shooting team like this you got to slow them down somewhere Leo Wallace and Meek actually went out of bounds blocking each other out this game's got physical folks and Wallace picks up a personal there's that Great first step by Price again. That'll be three on Wallace. We talked about Stackhouse having an advantage when he put the ball on the floor against Parks early on. Price has that same thing as he gains confidence on Wallace. That's five team fouls on the Tar Heels now. Wojciechowski throws it away. Too much distance between man and receiver. On Stackhouse. He made such a great move that Wojo was frozen. Stackhouse hit her exactly, you know? I'd be like you and I trying to guard him, Tim. He'd be so sure that the fake was going to get us out of position, we'd be waiting on him and fall down. <laughs> 756 to play. Look at the you'll love this stuff play. I guarantee you, this is the one that Rasheed Wallace flushes back down inside. Terrific extension. 7.56 to play. 68-59 Duke. If you're just joining us, Carolina got out to a 12-2 run. They led by as many as 17 in the first half. It was 34-29 Carolina at the half. Now it's 68-59 Duke. What a turnaround. He started out making 9 of 10, going to Wallace and Williams. Stackhouse got away from him. Tough shot. This foul is on Meek. Now, two things are going to happen bad if Duke fouls. One is it puts Carolina on the line. But number two, it stops the clock all the time, Tim. So they get points with a silent clock. That's four on Meek. It's also 10 team fouls, so the Tar Heels will be shooting two every trip to the line now. And Carolina, a team that normally is pretty solid from the free throw line, this year only shooting 65%. Jerry Stackhouse going after his sixth double-double of the year. He now has 17 points and eight rebounds. Carolina at 65% is in last place in the league. Not very often do you win league championships or even contend for them when you are the last place free throw shooting team in the league. You know, a key for Carolina this year, especially in conference games, has been limiting opponents' chances at the foul line. Yep. And you know, Duke for so many years in their great seasons would end up shooting more free throws than the other team made this year. A big, big differential there. Nowhere close. Coming off the screen. Another tough shot. Parks kicks it back out. How about Langdon? He was hot. Williams staying right on him now. Not wanting to give him any more shots. There's a double team out here. Somebody's open. Newton left alone. Duke's gone cold. Stackhouse with the rebound. It's a three on two. Calabria will pull up and shoot the three. That's a big miss. He got the nation's number one three point shooter. Chance to come back. He gets the wide open shot and misses. And again, that clock is going to start to become very important in this game. Duke showing a little more patience the last two trips. Well, they ought to make Carolina have to guard him here. Use as much clock as they can to wear Carolina down. We know it's not a deep team. Capel takes the baseline, oh! and he's fouled. This is going to be called on Stackhouse, and for Jerry, that'll be four. 
Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the 1996 Olympics, presents this Olympic trivia question. Name the UNC swimmer who was a gold medalist at the 64 Olympics and was also the first person to swim the 100-meter backstroke under 60 seconds. And we'll have the answer for you a little bit later. Two shots. 6.18 to go. Jerry Stackhouse has picked up his the fourth personal. Now, Tim, the thing that really hurts there, you can hide Stackhouse, and he's a smart enough player not to probably pick up number five on the defensive end of the floor. But with his penetration, which is what you want now, it really takes away his ability to drive to the basket on the offensive end. Capel makes the first. You know, Capel is only a 57% free throw shooter, which surprises me. He has six points tonight. Capel really came to the front last year in Duke's uh, great run to the final four. The exception of the Arkansas game really played well. Duke by nine. Lankton on a hold. His man was going away from the basket. No chance to get the pass. Bad time to foul. Wasn't necessary. Freshman foul. Yep. That's three on Langdon. Again, giving the team an opportunity to catch him with a clock stop. Don't forget now, Duke has over the limit now for a 10 team foul, so they're shooting two every trip. Newton comes out, Meek comes back in for the Blue Devils. Donald Williams, really surprisingly, just a 60% free throw shooter. Only been to the line 65 times this year, which is almost half. But what a Jerry Stackhouse alone. This guy's got too good a stroke to be a 60% free throw shooter. He now has just four points in the second half, 14 for the game. With a shot like that, you wonder how he ever misses any. Isn't that the truth? How about the game he had against Florida State with his first five threes? Here's McGinnis with a steal. Beats Stackhouse and he slams it. Now here, if Carolina was deeper here's where they'd really be tough they'd be able to give this energy on full court pressure but when you're basically playing a five-man rotation you can't ask guys to play 37 minutes walking the ball full court leads five and Langdon turns it over again but the possession here belongs to Duke time for Wojo on the floor they need a better ball handler against this pressure Calabria comes back in Landry goes out You know they're going to be full court pressure. Put your best dribbling ball handler out there. Mike has been bringing it up. He's primarily a two guard or a, even a three man sometimes. 5:30 left to play. And now it's Duke that looks a little bit uncertain. Kick by McGinnis. Tough, pretty guy. Well, he's anchored next to the guy they'd love to be able to suit up in this situation through the Tommy Amaker. He's the perfect guy in this situation, but obviously has used up his eligibility. Cable, oh, nice pump pick. Duke by seven. Well, because they hit those outside shots, Carolina had to go to stop it. For three. Going to get tight now. If they had energy, this would be the time to keep pressing. Call this on McGinnis. Hand check. Foul is on number five for the Tar Heels, Jeff McGinnis. His second. Well, the nation's bank trivia question. Let's name that UNC swimmer that had all that great success. Harold T. Thompson, man. Billy, you were all over that. No, I didn't have the answer to that one. And a lot of others. <laughs> Every time I know the answer, they change the question, Ken. Remember Roddy Piper, Absolutely. the wrestler? That was his deal. Cable down double figures. He has 10. Fans 
get really silent, huh? They'd do anything for this win right here. Stackhouse goes by. You knew it was coming. Great first step. Nice pass to Wallace. What a smart play by Jerry Stackhouse to pull up and not pick up that fifth foul on the charge. Great play. Drive, draw, and dish. Looking for the trap. They'll say Wojo is the man to have on the floor right now if you're Duke. They have nobody to set up the offense. Williams for three. It's a one-point game. Duke wants timeout. We'll be back after this message from Bud Light. That proof positive instant replay, Billy. Well, there's that pump fake. We started this game talking about the mismatch there with Stackhouse going by uh, Cherokee Parks, and he's still doing it. Stackhouse, Wallace, and Williams have combined for 60 points. The rest of Carolina just 13. Race is on. Here's Parks. Stackhouse couldn't pick up number five. Saw that the other night. Syracuse, the long pass, just as Duke completed it there against the press. Syracuse sealed the win against St. John's. Calabria for three. That's why he's out there leading the nation, huh? We're tied at 76. That's the third tie of the ball game. And Carolina wants a timeout. All youngsters between 3.46 to go in the ball game. The Blue Devils have not lost four straight to North Carolina since the early 1980s. They're trying to avoid that here. We'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. 1974, Duke, North Carolina, one of the all-time great comebacks in Tar Heel history. Down eight with 17 seconds to go. Bobby Jones, John Kuster helped Carolina cut the lead to two. The voice of the Tar Heels, Woody Durham. Two, one, Walter takes the shot. Davis shot, sent it to overtime with the Tar Heels won 96 to 92. Tell me, let me tell you a story about that one. I was sent down on the end line to do the player of the game interview with a Duke player that day with the lead and sat there and watched that comeback from the end zone and obviously had to go back upstairs for the overtime and nobody from Duke got the MVP, I can assure you. It's an incredible comeback. Three twenty-five to play in this one. We're tied at 76. Carolina being very patient defensively here. Shot clock at five. Oh. Meek. Down by Wallace. Beautiful positioning by Eric Meek to pass on the money. Rasheed Wallace got caught. I think he was really expecting something from the outside. Meek pinned him from behind and used his strength to go up. That is four on Wallace. And a wicked price for the Blue Devils. Perfect pass. Eric at the line for the Blue Devils. One shot. It's the only place that ball could have been thrown and completed. Meek now in double figures with ten. He makes it a three-point ball game. A lot of foul trouble with three minutes to play. Wojciechowski now in the ball game. Oh, beautiful double pump. Boy, he's almost falling on his back. Wallace now has 22 points. Now Duke with a primary ball handler in the game. Caper. Fade away. Langdon gets it back. Showed some strength again. You know, we had these two grappling for a ball earlier tonight. Double screen. Might have had the shot and you can make the good solid catch there. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 
12 seconds. I don't know if you want to go one four here, though. Good catch. Capable left alone. Oh, what a rebound. That was Stackhouse taking it away from Cherokee Parks. Every possession is huge now. Duke by one, under two minutes to play. Call this on Meek. But let's think about going to the foul line. Is Wallace not a good free throw shooter? Really, those two have been banging so hard all night. Not the first time they've been to the floor. In the first half, they landed in the front row one time. You see, Wallace, who is right now on record to be the best field goal shooting for career guy in Carolina history, is shooting 65 from the field and 61 from the foul line. He's got four or five tonight, so the percentages would be against him. So Meeks leaves with five personals. Newton will come into the game. Meeks had 11 points, 10 rebounds. Solid game. Very solid. Last year, in 26 minutes in this same contest, Eric Meek had 12 points and eight rebounds. So he backed it up with another solid performance tonight. Wallace ties the game. Isn't it amazing that you win games doing things sometimes you don't normally do? Two worst free throw shooting teams in the league. Tonight, both shooting over 80%. This is the second one. And Calabria slapped it off. Now, now, did it hit Stackhouse? I think it hit Stackhouse. On... I thought that it hit Stackhouse after it hit off the leg of the Duke player. Let's take a look at this. Smart play by Calabria. Now watch this. Bang. Oh, we don't quite see it here. I thought Jerry Stackhouse got a piece of it. Nonetheless, the Tar Heels have the ball. Wallace wants it down in low against Newton, who has four fouls on him. Like that Stackhouse matchup with Parks going by him. Wallace wanted it badly called for it and fires right over top of Newton. Second great turnaround jumper by Wallace. Two point lead by the Tar Heels. Duke taking a lot of time here. Blue Devils not playing with the same confidence they had earlier. Well, they've got Stackhouse on Parks down inside. Wojciechowski called for the foul. Rashid Wallace, both ends of the floor with big time plays. Cherokee Parks had excellent positioning. Watch this sensational play by Rashid Wallace. Stays on the ground and gets all ball. So Wallace goes back to the line. Now if you're Duke, you got to start pushing that ball up quicker, Tim. Wallace leads the ACC in field goal percentage. He's fourth in rebounds, third in blocks. Had six double-doubles this year. Tonight, he's been spectacular. 26 points. As I said, he made four out of five. You're a 60% free throw shooter, so percentages eventually start working the other way. them both. Stackhouse gets it back. 50 seconds left. And Shimon Williams calls timeout. Six seconds remain, 81-79 Tar Heels. Well, for those people who uh, turned out early after the Tar Heels got the lead, I bet you they're back in here now. ACC Action has been brought to you by...
Nations Bank by MCI by Pizza Hut and by Nationwide Insurance. North Carolina has one timeout left. Duke has one timeout. 46 seconds remain. It's 81-79 Tar Heels. Well, neither team in an overtime this year. And I'd have to say, if you go overtime and you're playing at home, it's, you know, I really would think it would favor Duke University. Stackhouse has got four fouls on him. Duke in a little better shape foul-wise. A little deeper team, fresher legs. But they got to get to that point. Possession error also belongs to the Tar Heels. I think when you're at home in that situation, be thinking to play for the time. 46 seconds on the game clock, 27 seconds on the shot clock. Guinness, Williams, Stackhouse, Wallace, and Calabria on the floor for North Carolina. Donald Williams back in the game. He's the guy you kind of feel will have the ball in his hands. I'd like to have him on the foul line if you're uh, Carolina. Tar Heels spread the floor. Shot clock at 10. Stackhouse goes. Blocked by Parks. Calabria gets it back. No call under the basket. There's got to be a call. Late whistle. That was a really late whistle. Oh, the official underneath the basket called nothing. Fortunately, the play was called from the outside. Stackhouse, some drive, we saw the great block by Wallace. There's even better one by Cherokee Parks. Now, how did this become a foul on Stackhouse? It's not. It's on Wallace, and that's five. But Stackhouse got fouled down inside. No call. Wallace was called for that foul. He has five and now leaves the game. How about that? That was something, Tim. I, I definitely felt that Stackhouse was fouled under the basket. No call by the official right in front of the play. Number 45, Serge So Swinton. Parks will go to the line, Returns and he's line shooting two. At the line, 77% free throw shooter. Cherokee's had an outstanding game. He's two for two at the line tonight. Because of the 10 team fouls, he'll be shooting two. 19 seconds left, and Duke trails by two. Well, that was a sensational block, the first by Wallace, and then, of course, by Cherokee Parks, because Stackhouse was throwing that one down. Perfect rotation. 81-80, North Carolina, and Wallace can only look on. We're tied. Well, this has been a crazy game. When you think of the comebacks and the reason for the comebacks in this game. Shot clock is off. Ten seconds left in the game. McGinnis. OT. It's good if it goes. We're going overtime. Well, Tim, I said if it got to overtime, I thought it favored Duke. Home court, much deeper club, and Wallace on the bench. We'll be back with the five extra minutes after this. Blue Devils looking for their first conference win of the year. Tied at 81. We're going into overtime. McGinnis tries to make the play. Had the shot. Price gets the good rebound. Did have time if that had gone, Tim, but obviously about eight rows up in the stands. Rasheed Wallace is out of the game with five fouls. Eric Meek has also been eliminated from the game with five personal fouls. You've got two key players here in this uh, overtime. 
with four fouls. Newton, who, who uh, took the place of Meek, and Stackhouse, who jumped center in this, in this situation. He'll jump it again. Talk about versatility. Jerry Stackhouse listed at 6'5". I don't know if he's that. Going up against Cherokee Park, 6'10". You saw out of the five extra games, overtime games, five extra period games, Duke has won three of those. That's a terrible toss. The ball was thrown actually backwards. This is Parks. Carolina sets up a little 1-4. Stackhouse loses it on the way up. He talks to the referee about a slippery ball, but too late for the referee to do anything about it. Now, Cable would be smart. If he realized it is, he should say something to the referee. Nice defense by Zwick. Yep. And a smart play by Parks not to go ahead and try to get a bad shot off. Shot clock at 10 now for Duke. Here's where you definitely don't want to foul. Capel, tough shot. Rebound by Zwicker. Donald Williams. There's his running one-hander. Oh, is that nice? Leading in to get the foul. He is really outstanding at that. You know the best guy that I've seen at that in this league, Mark Price. He used to be able to do that all the time. Get a guy on his hip, lean back into him, and shoot the shot. It really was a foul that time on Williams. That error, see, above the shooter, that error belonged as much to Langdon as it does Williams. Williams bangs on in there, but he picks up the foul. That is four personals now on Langdon. Mark Price used to have that down to a science. Donald Williams with 19 points. Make it 20. And it's a three-point lead for the Tar Heels. And you see what Dean Smith is doing here? A little subtle substitution. Put Landry in, let him work on defense, have Williams ready to go back on offense. See how quickly Dean Smith gets Williams back in there and Carolina gets the ball. Capel gets into trouble. Calabria steals it. Capel's foul. Called for the foul. Capel. Interesting. Dean Smith looked at Donald Williams and looking down at him said, hey, we're right back in the same situation. You've got Calabria, good free throw shooter, so just sit right here. Capel's had trouble with the, uh, the traffic press. And that's why I think Wojciechowski Woj is really the guy to have in the ball game. They don't have a pure point guard outside of him. Nice touch. Carolina starting to pull away. 86-81 with three and a half to play in the overtime. Again, there's the trap. And there, oh, almost the turnover by Stackhouse. Capel, tough shot. Capel tried to take it over his wicker. Boy, Duke just not execu executing in this overtime. Carolina now spreads the floor to melt the clock. And Dean Smith has Williams sitting on the sideline. Just in case he can get him back in there quickly. Two fifty to play in the game. The shot clock at ten. McGinnis, tough shot, makes it. McGinnis. Double got to bump, reload. got to bring it up quickly here. Duke taking much too much time to get set up. Carolina with a seven-point lead now and two and a half minutes to play. Boy, Duke really wouldn't be bad even to take a timeout. They're really out of sync. Here's Collins. Really out of sync, Tim. You know, that might do it. Got two minutes to play. It's a seven-point lead. Carolina's going to spread the floor. Well, after what I've seen tonight with the comebacks by both teams at various times, I'm not going to make any predictions. But Duke definitely has to go out and put pressure on them. I mean, the Carolina really playing with six men right now. Five on the floor plus the clock. 
Terrific job in overtime of execution by the Tar Heels. Shot clock down to six, so Carolina's going to go. Two on the shot clock. Stackhouse. Stack. Ball game there. Used every second. Nine-point lead. Duke still hasn't called a timeout to get themselves organized. That'll help. There's one. Marks for three. And there's your timeout with 124 left. We'll be back. The action continues on Saturday. Maryland against Georgia Tech will lead off the day, and then it just gets better after that. Just continues to roll on. Duke and Clemson, Florida State against Virginia. Cavaliers, tough loss last night to Maryland. And the NC State woke back against these Tar Heels of North Carolina. ACC basketball rolls on. There's the man that coached at Duke, played at NC State, and he'll be working that NC State game this weekend. Bucky Waters. Four to play, 90-84, Tar Heels. Who's another guy that played at NC State and coached at Duke? Does anything ring a bell to you? Played at NC State, Co coached, coached at Duke. Vic Boobus. <laughs> 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 Who would ever forget, huh? One of the great coaches that's ever been in this league or in the country, for that matter. A tremendous 10-year run here at this school. spread in the floor. I would have given the advantage to Duke in overtime, but they never came down and got themselves organized offensively. What are they waiting on now? One you got a foul. One Under a minute to play. You Shot clock's at 10. Williams for three. Landry all alone underneath with the rebound. Got the foul. Parks files Landry. In about 14 seconds, we're off the clock, uh, Tim, during that period of time. Down six. I realize that's two possessions in terms of hitting two threes, but you're going to be fouling, so you gotta uh, you gotta figure that Carolina going to the line has opportunities to put more points on. So it's really more than two possessions that you're gonna need in order to tie up the game. So you gotta foul quicker than that. Billy, it looks like Duke is gonna go to 10 and 10, 0 and 8 in the conference. And that's hard to believe. I mean, this is a talented ball club. Well, it still is a young team that certainly lost an awful lot of confidence, and I don't think anybody can overstate what the loss of Mike Krzyzewski has meant in terms of being able to pull a club straight again. Well, I agree with that. We certainly send our best along to Coach K. Dean Smith, a lot of sweat. He likes his gym hot at Carolina, but he was in a hot gym here tonight. This comes, was an oven. Yep, comes away, though, with another... Great win on the road. Makes it four in a row for Carolina. Price for three. That'll make it 92-87. He had a foot on the line. They gave him two. 92-87 with 29 seconds left. And there again, uh, Tim, freshman mistake. That's you terrible. Know, exactly. The worst shot you can take in basketball is the shot where you have one foot on or near the line. When you could, at this point, you've got to be a step back. He was backing up as he released it. Yep. But you got to be in that position for three as you catch the ball. A win tonight by the North Carolina Tar Heels to put him in a tie with Maryland at the top of the Atlantic Coast Conference. They'll both go to seven and one. And even though it is Duke who's struggling right now, wins on the road are so critical in a conference race like this. These fans give them some credit. They've stayed right with it the whole game. They really have. Here's a look at the standings that we talked about. A Carolina win that I make them seven and one, tied with the University of Maryland. Those two play next Tuesday night, and Duke will go to 0 and 8 down the bottom. Duke has won 82 of the last 90 games in this building. This will be four losses in a row. Well, there, a lot of streaks have gone down for them. Streaks out of the AP poll. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the third straight week, Billy. They have not been right. right. And they had the longest streak going in the country. 153 consecutive weeks. 
67 of those in the top 10. Right now, Arizona leads in that in that run with the Carolina number two position. North Carolina 23 of 30 tonight at the foul line. Duke made only 13 trips to the foul line. We talked about that earlier. That's been part of Carolina's success, limiting opponents' trips to the line. Duke was 12 of 13, but this is Calabria. And one of the things that had been a Duke trademark for so long is getting to the foul line, which as we saw, they're not doing this year. One of the things that uh, could have happened tonight early on, I thought, again, was that that mismatch that Parks and Meek had against Stackhouse and Wallace. And they really didn't take advantage of it early. All five starters average double figures for Carolina. There's Calabria now in double figures to keep that streak alive. Got to get him up quick. 20 seconds left in the ball game. We're in overtime. Langdon for three. 94 89, 16 seconds left. And Duke. Parks with a quick foul. Duke doing the best right now to stop that clock quickly. Remember those 15 or so seconds they lost when it was at 55 seconds, went down to 40 41. We'd like to have those seconds back now that they're uh, trying to pull off one of the patented Carolina comebacks. Billy, you were talking about streaks a moment ago. UNC has been in the top 25, 83 successive weeks. Great program. Yep, tough to do. On schedule once again to have not finished any lower than third in the league, which they'd really have to fall apart to not continue that incredible run. Talked about the role that they've been on to beat Clemson. Anna Virginia's first loss. Wake Forest, tough win there. Tough win against Virginia Tech. Ten seconds left in the ball game. Down six, they need two possession to get a three. Doesn't help you. Well, I don't know. He was making the basket and he's fouled by Landry. Well, that's not, well, that's a three. Yes, that's right. Amazing. Okay. Not the way you wanted. Five seconds left. See, and there's no reason if you're Landry ever to foul. Let him have it, too. Because that possession, they still need two more possessions. With five seconds to go, they can't get it. Dean Smith still working the bench. That counts McGinnis, Williams, Calabria, Zwicker on the floor. And Dean Smith turns to Landry and probably questions what you're thinking about committing the foul there. Go long. Four seconds left. Zwicker's foul. Well, hold on here now. It's 95-92 with four seconds left. Uh, yep, they needed to go long on that one, Jim, because they had a man wide open just throw it down there. McGinnis was open. This is still a possibility here. Not out of the realm. Nope. The fans know it. Now, great crowd. You got to be thinking about the play, though. Duke's timeout situation. Get the ball to half court. Langdon has been hot from three tonight. Cherokee can shoot the three. Billy Carolina in the overtime. Eight of nine from the line. And I'll tell you what, if you're Carolina, you don't let a man have a three. You foul if Slipper were to make, miss these free throws. Uh-oh. You got to foul. You can't let them have the three to tie and go to another overtime. This one becomes time huge. Carolina. Carolina takes a timeout. Duke doesn't have any timeouts left. Carolina still has one. Four seconds remain. I, you know what? I, I think that that timeout right there helped Duke an awful lot because, you know, they have to set up something special. But Carolina taking the timeout, it gave Duke an advantage, I think, of these two timeouts. Obviously, Dean Smith going to use his uh, brilliant strategy to set up something up for Carolina. But think about it for a second. If you're Duke, you really needed a chance to get everybody on the same page as how you're going to get off this shot just in case uh, Zwicker were to, were to miss. Now, Zwicker has only shot 14 free throws this season. He's made eight of those. We saw him just miss. The sophomore from the Netherlands says a lot of pressure on him right here. Okay, Timmy, I went out on the line here, all right? I said that I'd foul, all right? Now, well, how about you? What do you think about that theory? Do you allow a team 
to tie up with a three or you foul, put them on the line and say they've got to do all of these things. They've got to make two or they got to make one, miss it, and then get the rebound and put well, it, it back in four seconds. Because right away you take away any possibility of a three. That's right. But you don't see many coaches agreeing with that. I guess because they have to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> so all the timeouts left. Carolina still has one. And Dean Smith, let's see if he guards the man taking the ball out of bounds. Probably not. No, I, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, he's already put Stackhouse and Glavery at the other end. Ed Geth will be by himself, I believe. Well, they had six men on the floor. That would have really been something. How about a technical, technical there? foul? McGinnis ran off the floor. He didn't realize he'd been substituted for. This is it. He missed it. Got to put it up. One second. Cable shot. about fatigue it's 8,000 degrees in here yep. and they've been playing seemingly forever second overtime period tied at 95 and remember what happened in the first overtime Duke had no offense for the first three or four minutes it was all Carolina Stackhouse nice defense Parks with another rebound he has played so well tonight Eric Meek on the bench with five fouls. Rasheed Wallace at the other bench with five fouls. Parks wanted the foul and Zwicker, no call. Really a test of wills now the rest of the way because both of these clubs have got to be worn out. The price should be pretty fresh, huh? Remember, Price hit that three, too, near the end of the second, uh, the first overtime period. A couple of 
big rebounds by Zwicker. Of course, he missed those free throws. Could have sealed the game. One minute gone. We're still looking for our first bucket. McGinnis is fouled. I believe this will be called on Capel. Both teams in the two-shot situation. Now that's five on Capel, so Capel will have to leave the ball game. Well, he should get a hand. He put Duke where they are now. Look at Capel says it. Yeah. Is that five? Well, it could have been called on either guy there. Let's see who's going. Newton coming back in there. Now it's going to be, yeah, Newton and Wojo. Well, the reason for that is Capel required two substitutions. He required one to come in there, obviously because of his fifth foul, but he also required Wojo to come in there because Capel has been handling the ball at point. Number five, Jeff McGinnis shooting. Now remember, Capel had been doing much of the ball handling. He also hit that huge shot at the buzzer. So Dean Smith goes back again to that sub subtle substitution. And how wisely he's been using this very short bench team that he's got. Stackhouse now sits down for this defensive sequence, much as he did with Williams at the end of uh, the first overtime. The sophomore from Charlotte misses the second one. 96 95 Tar Heels. A little box set here for Duke. Tim Brant and Billy Packer with you in the second overtime in Durham. Just as Duke started the first overtime, at least in this overtime, their offensive set has is, is looked solid. Getting decent shots, just not getting them to fall. Both teams picked up an extra timeout, of course, going into this overtime. Here's McGinnis on Wojo. Look at Calabria at 6 4, getting an offensive board. Boy, that's great hustle there. Sure was. Went through three Duke players. Three Spick minutes to play. Spicker doing a pretty nice job getting his hands on some balls. He's not catching them, but he's keeping them alive. Remember that tap out he had in the, uh, I guess that was in the regulation. Really, now Carolina spreads the floor again. They'll use a lot of the clock. Well, they don't have Stackhouse in the game, you know, so that they want that clock working for him here. Williams looks up and sees it at seven. He's got to go. Good job by Langdon. He got pushed off. Oh, Donald Williams. <laughs> Makes big baskets. He's got 22 points tonight. Important possession here for Duke. They've got to get off a good shot. I'll tell you this, I won't write off Duke anymore. No. <laughs> we posted it and took it back yeah, down. Yeah, we had to take it back down. I think they were six down with 40 seconds to go, and we saw what happened. Dean Smith wants a timeout. He wants timeout Stackhouse in the game. And he see he calls the timeout. This is really a smart play here. He, he does. Call, he calls the timeout. He's not going to use the timeout, so he's not going to give Duke a chance to huddle. He's going to get Stackhouse in the game for this offensive possession. He hasn't won 800 plus games for nothing. You know, he, that's exactly right. He was very, very quick to go over to yep. Frank Scagliata and tell him, I want the oh. timeout, but I want to keep everybody on the floor. Yep, doesn't give Duke a chance to get organized. Runs the cheerleaders off. Carolina has one left. Duke has one left. But what really happened there is that Dean Smith was able to get Stackhouse rested for a good two or three possessions back out on the floor. I'm surprised they don't go one four with Stackhouse on the top. He's got Newton on. He can beat him with the dribble. Here's Stackhouse with three on the shot clock. He lost it. Duke gets it. Here comes Price. 123 to play. Oh, that is it for three. We're tied in 98. Let's take this one to midnight. What do you think? We might. See if anybody's standing. We know these fans will be standing. They haven't 
been down here in 20 minutes. Billy, this is truly one of the classics between these two. Williams off balance. Oh, incredible shooting. Oh. The steal in the bucket by McGinnis. <laughs> Heads up play by McGinnis. One minute. He's asking Dean Smith, what's the defense you want, coach? Price. They're in a flow now. This is, you know, they're much more comfortable. You know, McGinnis was playing defense down the other end and was pointing at the scoreboard because they didn't put up his bucket. It happened so quickly. Now it's up. 102-100, Carolina. 25 seconds left. After a lot of foul here. Play solid defense. We did it back once. There it is. Oh, nine no. seconds left. I don't think he realized there's not that enough time for a play. Wojo. And that's it. Freshman didn't realize there wasn't time to set up offense. Every player exhausted, Tim. They've given it all, both teams. And embraces for both teams. 102 to 100. Well, it shows you what kind of league this is. Number one team tied for first place plays the team on the bottom and takes it to this kind of ball game. Great show. Great show indeed. So North Carolina does go to 17 and 1, 7 and 1 in the conference. The Blue Devils go to 10 and 10, 0 oh and 8. Double overtime. For Billy Packer, I'm Tim Brandt. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. Good night, everybody. That's 25 points for the game, but this is your first double overtime. What was going through your mind? I was just tired. I was just trying to push myself. Hopefully, we can come together and get the win. I mean, they played great. I think we played hard, and it was just a, a competition on all the way through. You were 17 points ahead. You dropped the 10 back. Then there was the timeout. What did Coach say? Um, we were just missing some some easy shots, really. I mean, we had gotten out of um, our, our motion offense. We were getting good looks. We just they weren't falling, and they were doing a good job of hitting some some open threes and some tough threes when we was in their face. So I think we did a good job in the second half of, of sustaining their run and coming back. Have you ever had a game that was as emotional as this one? No, I don't think so. We knew coming in that this was going to be a dogfight all the way through. I mean, they hadn't, they, they, I mean, you know, they hadn't won a game in the conference, but we knew they were going to come out and compete hard. And we just, we tried to go and do the same things we've been.